Hey everybody, so one of the biggest topics around uh, the medicinal mushroom, functional mushroom industry is whether we want to be growing on wood versus if we want to grow on grain. So always traditionally and in the wild, you are going to see these types of mushrooms growing off wood. It's its natural food source and as we've moved into the industrialization and scale of the mushroom industry, we've seen a lot of people go towards what is um, an easy option. So I'm not, I'm not gonna say it doesn't have its place. Certainly it does, especially if people want to access, access, access the, the body of the mushroom, the mycelium, and they wanna use it for its very unique compounds clinically, that's when it comes into its relevance. But we're not doing that here. What we're doing is we're working with the mushrooms as they have been worked with for thousands of years. And that's just using the fruiting body that grows out of the wood or grows out of the grain. And so what we're comparing is what kind of product you're gonna get when you grow it out of a natural food source. Just the same with, um, let's just say with beef we now know that you are going to get a dramatically superior product when the cow is eaten grass versus when it's eaten grain. And that's the exact thing that you need to remember when it comes to mushrooms. Mushrooms naturally eat wood. They do not naturally eat grain. So why would people grow it on grain? It's because it's cheaper, it's easier to scale, and they can move the grain away after the process and get access to the, the biomass of the mycelium, which is a very cheap product. It creates a cheap product and it creates a very ineffective product when it comes to our intentions and that the Taoists and everyone else who's used mushrooms for thousands of years had, which is the cultivation of our health, deep cultivation of, um, our, uh, of our jing, our chi, and our shen, which is just our physical body, um, our vitality, and our spirit. So one of the major things you can look for in whether you've got a wood-grown or a grain-grown product, first of all, you can ask the company. Um, you can ask the grower. They have to <laughs> tell you whether it's wood-grown or whether, whether it's grain-grown. When you look at the product that you get, let's just focus on the fruiting body here. When you grow on wood versus when you grow on a grain, you're going to find that the chemical compounds, the nutritional, um, the, the nutritional elements of the mushroom, as well as those deep um, medical um, medicinal compounds are going to be dramatically higher and in greater resonance with all the health benefits that we've read about for thousands of years for just say like a reishi mushroom versus if you grow it on grain, you are not gonna get that same array of medical uh, medicinal compounds. It is really quite empirical at this point. Second of all, the flavor is just not going to be the same growing on a grain. And this isn't even talking about when they mix the mycelium and the grain in with the final product. This is just if they say it's a fruiting body grown on grain, the flavor isn't there. And when the flavor isn't there, you can definitely know the energetics aren't gonna be there. Remember. These herbs for thousands of years in Chinese medicine were famous because of how bitter or pungent. That tells you there is a particular array of compounds that are going to enter into the organ systems and make the difference that we want and actually cultivate the health. When you have an inferior growing style, growing on grain, the flavor is gonna take a decrease. And that's our real accessible um, way. It's a decentralized way. We don't even have to go and study all the beta-glucans and all the compounds and see that it's inferior in that way. You can just sense it. And that's where uh, over thousands of years, as we've become opened up and there's been trade routes and everyone can start growing reishi in cheaper ways and growing mushrooms in cheaper ways, all those people who really understand the energetics of herbs just through making a tea and tasting it, they've been able to very quickly say, hey, this is a very inferior product. Where is it from? What has it grown on? So on and so forth. And that's given rise to um, the, that notoriety of just wood grown medicinal mushrooms. It's the number one thing you got to look for. And then for Super Feast is 
the DDAO. That's that, that second layer. That's why it emerged, uh, uh, re-emerged and became so famous because DDAO is that type of mushroom sourced in a particular way, grown in a particular way in accordance with nature, where you, uh, you can rest assured that this is the most potent medicine. And so the healers over time, because they have the best interests of their patients, knew how to look for the, the je ne sais quoi, that like premium, those premium uh, aspects. And a lot of the time it's going to come down to, to the flavor profile that you're going to get. That's going to mean that it's going to be very medicinal. The other aspect, when you are growing on grain, you are 100% guaranteed that that is going to be grown in a lab with, a, with controlled temperature, controlled conditions. It's going to be completely void of any natural input. So there's going to be no wilderness in there. It is again for scale. And for some very particular operations, it's perfect. But for when people want to have long-term benefits, when they want to connect with why reishi became so famous. 2000 years ago, we see it in the first Materia Medica, we've just been put on a pedestal. We see the Taoist depicting that mushroom in heaven, the only herb to be depicted in heaven. It's there for a reason. And that is because they had access to mushrooms that were grown on wood and had access to mushrooms that were exposed to the natural, um, the natural world, which made them highly adaptogenic. Grown on grain, that is going to have none of that. So there's a big, it's a big benefit already to just knowing that you're grown on, on wood. Then we get to the fact that some people will be growing on wood, but they'll still be doing it in a lab. And so that's a different conversation. And that's where it's nice to, you know, when we say we're DDAO, you know 100% those herbs haven't been uh, created in a lab. They're exposed to the atmosphere, the atmosphere um, and the elements. They're going to make it highly adaptogenic. So general rule is when you want your... Uh, yourself, your family, whoever you're offering these mushrooms to, to have the greatest long-term benefits. And you want to make sure that that mushroom has been grown in a way which is at least exact, either exactly the same or at least highly similar to the conditions that made these mushrooms famous over time. Wood grown is the standard and it is the way to go. And it's the standard you should keep for yourself and definitely put that information out there and make sure that you are getting those questions asked because the mycelium, the benefit for people growing on grain is they can get access to the body, the, my, the mycelium. It's not the actual fruiting body that grows off. What they are able to do is, yeah, get rid of that grain and use that biomass, that real cheap product, which in the wild you can't get access to because it's all through the wood. It's impossible for you to get access to that mycelium. Therefore, any of the benefits you read traditionally about reishi or any other mushroom are all grown on wood without the mycelium at all being involved in this. So to the benefit for companies and people to use that mycelium is that they can create a dramatically cheaper product that does not align in the energetics or the nutritional um, or medicinal compounds that you know, we're, we're told through all the wisdom traditions that you know, are the reason why we want to be using reishi. So that's where it's really good to support those going the extra mile, growing on wood and only using the fruiting bodies.